so tired. I just woke up. I actually have a more interesting day at work today, so I wanted to take you guys along with me. In case you didn't know, my name is Michelle, and I am currently a manager working in tech slash media, and welcome to a fun day in my work life. Monday was spent working from home, Tuesday I was actually in office, and then today we're doing an all hands event at City Field, so it's supposed to be a really fun time. I think there's going to be one, a private VIP tour, and we get to see all the cool areas of City Field. The second part will just be work stuff, I won't really be sharing any of that and then the third part is we're actually going to be watching the Cardinals and Mets game tonight. I'm super introverted so I actually really struggle with going back to socializing regularly. More power to you guys that are extroverted and can do this on the daily. I absolutely cannot. I always leave these events feeling like I need an entire week to recover. And that's pretty accurate. I usually do need a week to recover. So if you guys are introverted like I am, I feel you. It is so, so hard and so tiring, but you are not alone. I get it. But with that, let's get going. Fun fact, my neighbors have chickens. I started off with heading over to my friend's apartment because she was so kind to give me a ride over to Queens. And oh my God, check out the view from her balcony. This is so awesome. Random fun fact, my friend actually drives stick shift and she is hands down the smoothest stick shift driver I've ever experienced. She is so talented. This was the first in-person event we've had in about two to three years. So the first thing we did was catch up with all our friends and teammates. I'm pretty sure I hugged more people in that one day than I did in all of 2020 plus 2021 combined. City Field opened in 2009 and is the home of the New York Mets. It was built as a replacement for Shea Stadium and all throughout you can actually find old remnants and odes to the old stadium. This was definitely my favorite part of the tour. We actually had the chance to go out onto the field and go check it out. The sun was shining, the sky was so blue, and the weather was so nice. It was absolutely the most perfect day. And then we walked through the dugout, which was actually pretty cool as well. Next up, we have the Jackie Robinson Rotunda. It is the main entryway for most guests when they visit City Field, and it really is such a beautiful space. I think it's a lovely way to celebrate the legacy of Jackie Robinson. Next stop, we entered the Mets Hall of Fame and Museum. Quick tip if you're going to be catching a game, it's actually open to any fan with a ticket for that day's game. It opens when the gates open and stays open till the end of the game. It's definitely worth checking out. Next up, we scoped out some club seats. I will probably never know what this is like, but one can hope. Quick Google search told me it's about 2,500 to 20,000 for one. Our last stop here was the press room. For lunch, we ate at Ebbs Brewing, a craft brewery that started in 2020 based out of Brooklyn. We had a sampling of different sausages, but my favorite was definitely the avocado toast and grilled cheese. It was so good. We spent the afternoon doing work things and then concluded with a happy hour overlooking the field while watching the teams warm up for their game. We had some time to kill before the game started, so my friends and I took advantage to do some merch shopping. Random fun fact, but did you know that the Mets blue and orange are actually an homage to the two former New York baseball teams, Dodger blue and Giants orange? Pretty cool, right? Our next stop was food, and City Field is actually super well known for its food. Another really cool fact, the skyline above Shake Shack is actually from Shea Stadium's original scoreboard. We've also got Fugu here, their chicken sandwich is so bomb, and shout out to these two guys for giving me a good laugh. I didn't try waffles, but I've heard good things. And you have to have a Nathan's, it's New York. I settled on Arancini Bros, I basically always get it at every single food fair I go to. Those were just a few of the highlights. Honestly, City Field does such a good job of taking iconic NYC food spots and squeezing them into the stadium. After picking up everything we needed, we finally made our way back to our seats for the game.
Hey friends, I forgot to check back in with you guys. Got back home from the game and then I went straight to take a hot shower. And now I'm in bed. Today was such a long day, but it was so nice seeing everyone that I hadn't seen in probably two years, three years. Anyway, I just wanted to say hopefully you had fun following along with me today and it was a fun tour of City Field. That place is so beautiful. I've been to both Yankee Stadium and now City Field, and City Field feels so much more homey and very, it's beautifully done. So, highly recommend you go visit, and yeah, thanks for joining me. Good night. Another lazy afternoon, the clouds covered in gray. Random side note, let's just take a moment to appreciate the view in this room. Good morning, guys. It is currently 8 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. I am not gonna lie, I normally never ever come into the office this early. However, I did have some meetings with my teammates out in Stockholm, so I shifted some things around so that I could accommodate their schedule a little bit better. Personally, my favorite way to start off my morning is with a nice routine at home of making an ice cold cup of cold brew or iced coffee and then taking some time to read a couple chapters just five to ten minutes of whatever book i'm working on at that moment i am a huge huge reader so i absolutely love waking up and spending some time reading i feel like it really sets the tone for the day in a nice calm and collected mood i don't know let me know in the comments below if you guys are readers and what you're working on right now. My goal for the year is to read 52 books, which I'm really far behind. I almost did it last year. This year, I think I'm going to do maybe one third of that or half of that. 52 is very ideal and it's very hard, but I love reading. I read everything. I'm not going to lie. I cannot wait to just get through this meeting and then go straight to the barista bar after. Um, I'll see you after. My usual routine, you guys know how it is. I ended up not going to the barista bar and just grabbed a cold brew. In addition to the coffee bars, our office also has breakfast, lunch, and then an assortment of snacks. My favorite is moon cheese, which reminds me of the astronaut ice cream, but cheese form. Tuesdays, I actually have a hit class with a trainer named Joe. He's fantastic, however, I only squeezed in a quick 30 minute session today just because I was a little busy. Hey guys! So I actually just finished up a bit of work before I had lunch after working out at the gym. Though we do have a cafeteria upstairs for today, I just opted to get a salad from Sweet Green. Like I mentioned in my previous video, I normally do eat with my teammates, except on the days where I'm working out, just because it cuts into my lunch time a little bit. So I actually just printed out forms to renew my passport. I obviously haven't done this in 10 years, but I was shocked by the sticker price and how expensive it is to renew your passport nowadays. I think the total ended up being about $180 almost. So for my passport, I got the one with the extra pages slash extended version. For me personally, I do travel a lot. You can follow along on my Instagram in case you want to follow along with any of my travels or see where I've been or where I'm going or things like that. I try to take two international trips a year. It is really, really handy in case you travel a lot. guys, editing Michelle here. I just finished a book, so I wanted to give a little mini book review on it as well as tell you about my recommendations for books that I have lined up next, written by Asian authors in honor of AAPI Heritage Month or the month of May. Also, here's my vintage Kindle from 2009. It has seen so many flights and trips, so many books, 
but she's still going strong and I'm gonna try and hold on to her for as long as I can. So I just finished reading the book Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. To preface, it totally is a self-help book, but I dabble in all sorts of genres and I'm not gonna lie, once in a while I do like to pick up a self-help book or some sort of philosophical book to remind me to stay grounded and question why I'm doing certain things and what kind of life I want to live. My experience reading this book was really positive. It seems like Singer has a background in yoga and meditation. I'm not sure if he's religious or not, so there were certain parts of the book that just didn't resonate with me, but my approach with these types of books is to take whatever learnings from it that you want. It doesn't have to be everything and that's totally okay. The book is basically about how you can only control so much of your outside world, your environment, the people around you. It's minimal at best. The one thing that you can control is your perspective. Your perspective has such a profound impact on whether or not you find happiness, enjoyment, inner peace, and fulfillment from life. For someone like me who can get so emotionally riled up over really, really stupid things, it is always such a good reminder to just let things go. There's an interview floating around on the internet of Stephen Colbert by Anderson Cooper where they talk about perspective and outlook on grief, and it really is quite similar to this book. This book also really reminds me of The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. So if you're a fan of that one, I think you might like this one as well. Overall, I really enjoyed Untethered Soul. I'm a pretty avid reader. You can find me on Goodreads. I'll link it down below. A little bit late, but in honor of AAPI Heritage Month, the month of May, the next books that I have lined up are Rise, A Pop History of Asian America from the 90s to Now by Jeff Yang, Phil Yu, and Philip Wang. I'm really looking forward to this one. I came across it through work because we actually had a fireside chat with Phil Yu, which was really cool. The book after that that I'm gonna start is The Next American Revolution by Grace Lee Boggs. Grace Lee Boggs was a Chinese American activist and revolutionary that was very notable during Detroit's black power movement. Her life and legacy that she left behind is so fascinating. So I'm really excited for this one. I'll link all the books below and also include an NPR article that covers the history of Grace Lee Boggs. That's all I want to share. See you guys. Today's Friday, so I'm just super happy and in a really good mood. I didn't even have a proper outro to end my night after the Mets game because I was so tired and exhausted. If you've made it this far, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Bye!